Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar with Scott Pulsini. Uh, futures trader, we do this every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so um, uh, we'll go through live trading and analysis uh, from uh, Scott's perspective, what the setups he looks at uh, for trading futures. Uh, you get to peek over his shoulder, uh, see him uh, understand his analysis, reading of the order flow, uh, taking trades and or, uh, managing uh, those trades. That's really uh, uh, a essential part of this, uh, understanding the trade management and money management. Uh, you guys know who Scott is. Uh, let's go through it. Uh, we have his contact information. I'll be putting this in the chat so you can reach out to him. He offers mentorship and educational services and a chat room, has an educational course, has a lot of stuff here. Uh, we'll put it into the chat for you, and you can also reach out to him via his email or his Twitter. I need to go through the disclosures, and then we'll turn it right over to Scott. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not uh, general be considered. disclosure, all bookmap limited materials. And should not be considered. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all bookmap limited materials, uh, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Consider. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. Uh, sounds like you're there, Scott. You hear me? Yes. Uh, right. So let me uh, grab your screen here. And, uh, oh, hold on. <clears throat> so uh, if you can start presenting, Scott. There it is. Got my screen. Got it. Okay. Excellent. Um, All set to go. All right. How are yeah, you? There is. Uh, <clears throat> I'm great. I'm a little baffled by what's going on. Actually, the last few days with the trade, it's been really strange trade. And then today with the SI indicator, I have not had one signal. I've had this running for over an hour. Wow. I've not had one signal in like like 15 plus markets. So I don't know. I mean, nothing's really happening, so I, I, I don't know. I've never seen that before. You're at least getting, you know, some signals firing off somewhere in grains or in natural gas or something, and there has not been one signal. So hmm. that uh, I have, so okay. I have not put on a trade because that's that's my driver of my trade. So okay, um, sitting here waiting for something to happen. So we can go over the uh, the context of these markets, and hopefully something will happen here. But it's a really odd trade. So we had this run up in the morning here. Um, you can see the volume is just pathetic. It's not pathetic, but it's not it's not indicative of what you would expect on a you know upsize move. Like this was the you know obviously we're chopping around now, but we opened up. I mean this volume is barely getting over a hundred percent for a few of these bars. And again, this is a relative volume chart based on the last 30 days, the exact time period. So you can see there's basically been one bar over 30, even even on this, it's barely been over 100%. So that's just really odd. And what's also odd, you can see we ripped up here, Russell ripped up and then Russell just collapsed. And these are just sitting here. So it's just, it's just some weird stuff going on. I can't really put my finger on, but it is what it is. So let's look at some of these markets here. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you know, when you're trading, you always want to look at your bigger picture stuff in the morning and just, you know, have an idea of what the market is, you know, long term bullish, intermediate team, inter intermediate term bullish or bearish, short term bullish or bearish, right? So obviously these markets are, I would say, long term bearish still. Um, 
I mean, I guess this you say this intermediate term, long term, we're obviously bearish, but intermediate term, I would say bearish, short term, bullish. So this is, we're at an important area here where I was willing to take a short if something fired off and I'm just not getting anything. So you can see, um, so going back to here, basically we had this balance. We've talked about this in my room many times. I think we talked about it last week as well here. And then just tried to break down. We built balance here, launched from this, went right through this. This is where I was telling everyone to get ready. This is now bullish and we built balance more balance and you can see today we gapped up so now we're at an area where i will consider a short uh, even though this is short-term bearish because we're into a uh, longer term area where this could falter and that's what this zone is for right so you can see this zone was where this gap down on this day so gaps are considered directional conviction uh which is one of the four main areas of charting um when you're looking at your longer term chart. So that's important. So something happened that day that caused that gap down, right? And you can see as we came here a few times, here failed, here failed. Now we're back in this area. So if I get a signal, I will short this, right? And the other thing too is, you know, you wanna be careful in these areas. So say we came up to this area, but we built balance like right here and we were breaking out of balance, right? So balance again are just traders placing bets right well you don't want to be standing in front of a puke of a current balance let me make this clear so say the balance is right here instead of down here right well yeah this is an important area where this has failed a couple times already but you, do you want to be standing in front of short traders right now that are puking right so the answer is no but now right now we're you know far enough from this this is the puke right so this could pause here and and, and at minimum pull back to this balance area here so that's why i'm willing to go short if i get a signal overall though you should be looking for areas to go long until something's violated meaning this is not a good area to go long per se but if we pull back to this the top of this guy or the high volume note of this guy that's a good place to go long so this guy chirping about very excited about something my squat guy from uh, financial juice so anyway I will short this and I will watch very closely to be getting out of shorts and looking for longs if we pull back here so that's yes you so we do this every morning pre-market in my room as well so this is you know, not out of the ordinary to go over these markets just so we get a bigger picture view. And again, you should be doing this every day just to know where you stand because you don't want to be, you want to try to align yourself with the longer term, shorter term. Those are the best trades. Those are the trades that you get the bigger moves. So you can see here, NASDAQ, this is a really important area, this zone I drew. So you can see gap down, directional conviction. Remember gaps are directional conviction. This is a regular trading hours chart. So it's showing you, it's not overnight. So it's showing you gaps, gap down, Directional conviction, directional conviction, directional conviction. And what are we doing right here? Putting in a selling tail, failed again. So selling tails are another um, one of the four main areas of charting, right? So you got four, the four areas are tails, <coughs> buying or selling tails, and a tail is just instant rejection, right? Which is really important. Directional conviction, tops and bottoms of balance areas and high volume nodes of balance areas. High volume nodes are just where the most trade occurred. So those are the areas that you wanna pay attention to when you're looking at the bigger picture. So I was really hoping to get a short setup up here. I would have taken that just like in the ES and there's just been absolutely nothing for my thresholds that I that I have set in here. <clears throat> hey Scott, just can you just, yeah. maybe just test it on the S&P. Like, uh, I mean, it should be working. It just seems odd you have not received anything. Maybe just lower it on one symbol. <laughs> Uh, the um, uh, threshold. Let's make it half. Yeah, and let's see if you get a. It just seems really well, weird that you didn't get. Well, I, well, well, yeah. I mean, it, I've seen it before, obviously, in, in equities or 
you know, one or two markets if nothing's happening, but to be across the board and not have one signal all for over an hour, that's really, really odd. But then again, I'm looking at these markets and nothing's really moving. So, I mean, it could just yeah. be, well, maybe everyone's golfing like I'm going to be doing this afternoon. I, I'm about to go right now if uh, this doesn't pick up. Um, so, I mean, here's a good example of a, I, I, we don't trade off these yet. Eventually we will. United State Oh, more sanctions. That's really working out well. So anyway, you know, you can see here this was a swipe, right? 1100. So you got to be careful, though, because for some reason, these swipes are not equivalent to what you see on the SI indicator, right? So, you know, if I were to see 1100 icebergs, I'd be like, yeah, that's that's awesome. That, let's draw that zone. It's not the same with the swipes. You just got to be careful drawing areas um, based on these. But if you see like 2,000, 3,000 and nothing down here, you can still draw a zone. And you can see this market is reacting to this swipe, which you could trade off of if you want and trade it like a, uh, we trade our SI indicator zones where you can, you know, play uh, an ATR out of here or 90% of an ATR out of here, risk an ATR above there and you can play that but again that's not enough for me to play and i'm not going to force a trade up here especially with this weirdness that's going on so i will just wait this is an important spot gamma level as resistance um, we have hung out above here for a while but if this gets back below here we should get a pullback at least to that um, balance area that i was just showing you guys which is here so i would watch them to, in the, back into this zone the top of the zone is 4582-ish and 4469-ish. So looking for that. Um, <clears throat> Ludwig levels that we use in the room, very, very, very powerful, especially for day trading, short-term trading. And then when they line up with the bigger picture stuff, they're even better. You can see this is just chop fest, nothing doing. So just hanging around the yellow directional lug. We had built new lugs overnight. Call them, I call them lugs, so I don't have to say Ludwig levels 45 times a day. <coughs> so this is the overnight trade into this morning. And we built lugs. And so, you, you know, the tendency with these, when you build new lugs, if this is going to remain a bullish, a short-term bullish market, you want to see prior red, which was prior resistance, just like regular charting, right? Prior resistance becomes support. You want to see the red hold and directional yellow hold. Um, and it's been just hanging here now so this should if this is going to continue to be bullish this should hold and go to the red lug you can see why we may be struggling here if you go over here to the market profile chart this is a prior um, composite market profile composite so again i know i go over a lot of basics on these webinars but you got to remember there's always new traders in here that are just learning and stuff so it's it's good to just go over so they know so you can see here so if days line up I'll just show you what this is. So this is a three-day composite. So the general rule of thumb is if a day lines up, um, so say this day overlaps at least 50% of the value area, and the value area of a market profile is just where 70% of the trade occurred that day. If it overlaps the prior day by at least 50%, you can merge those two. So the reason I added this one in is because if you get a day and then a lot of times it'll be like a day, an outside day, and then another day that was inside of the third day. You can merge all three. So that's basically what I did here, even though these did merge anyway. So that's what this composite is. So this is a three-day composite. And that was from end, end of March, middle March. You can see now we are struggling to get into. We failed to get in there, and that's where that... And this is that zone that I just showed you where we had a few down moves, right? And now we failed to hold outside of this one, right? So that, again, if I would have, there were so many things up here. So what you look for in your trading is confluence. So we know from the bar charts, that's where all those down moves started, right? Not all of them, but a few of them, right? So you know this, this is why you want to know all this stuff, right? You know, this was gap. I just showed this, but gap failed and now we're back here again right so you know that and then you look at your market profile and you're like okay well it's these are important areas Let's see if we can get in the composites so when a market accepts into a composite the tendency is to go to the other side well this one couldn't get in it and now it got back in it so now the tendency is to get back down to the bottom of this one and so you want to watch this one as well so 
this was looking like that for numerous reasons. And then you go to your shorter term Ludwig levels. And that was, you know, if we break this red, that's bearish, short term bearish. So then you look at all that and then you just wait for a real time volume signal. So you're waiting to, you know, that's what the driver of markets are, right? So you wait for that. And then so anywhere in here, if I got a signal, I was going to go short, especially now if we break this red, I think we're heading down in here. And that's that prior balance area. So this is part of trading, <clears throat> you know, just sitting and waiting. This is where traders get into trouble where, you know, your market's not doing anything and you start forcing trades, right? And that just because you feel either you you want the action, right? Which is a, a big problem. If you want action, you know, there's horse racing on 24 hours a day, get, go bet horses, right? So they either want action or um, they feel the need they have to trade because they have to make money. They have to pay their rent and so on and so forth. And that's what gets traders into big trouble instead of just being patient, right? And I, I know it sucks, especially when you're you're doing a webinar and nothing's going on, but you know, there's just some days that you have to accept this. So this is why I tell you guys, you want to have multiple markets that you're watching. So when you get days like this nonsense where nothing's going on, you can move to another market. Unfortunately today, every single market, there is not one setup anywhere. You know, usually you get, especially like natural gas has just been out of control. Things moving two, 300 ticks at a time. And there has not even been a, I haven't gotten a signal in here either. Let's see, what's this? Yeah, so I have this set at 150. This was a, this was a dumb and dumber. You can see this, I'm not gonna draw this zone because it wasn't threshold, but this was, you can see it on the chart, right? That's basically that. That was stop run. Stop runs are not real buying. It's just guys puking and you can see it didn't do much. And we actually went down, retested that area and failed. So that's the whole premise of the real time buying when you match it up with your your bigger picture views, but there's just been, this is one market you want to watch. You also do have to watch this. I did miss this one. So I have my threshold set, uh, natural gas at 150. Mm -hmm. So I will not get an alert unless that happens, but you gotta, you gotta watch this. So I had this set on reset. So this could have been drawn, right? So I had a hundred and then right after that, Actually, no, I take that back. The 100 was up here, and then there was another 100 down here. I was thinking that they were all in the same area. So if this would have come in back to back, these two, these two in, in the same area, then, yeah, you can definitely draw that zone. But this is a little too far. I mean, this is over, almost 100 ticks away between this one and this one, so I would not have drawn that zone. I'm not, I'm not playing 130 tick zones, right? So, But you do have to be careful. You might not get the alert, but it'll, it'll be back to back spikes, and then you want to draw that zone as, if, if it's in the same area. If, it, again, if it's this far away, then it's not worth drawing. Um, all right, so I mean, I guess we can turn this into a question and answer. I can go to, you know, other markets and go over the, you know, the bigger picture views, whatever you guys want. There's just, I mean, there's nothing. I'm not going to force a trade. If I'm sitting here by myself, I'm not trading, and I'm especially not going to force a trade with you guys watching and you know, jumping on my coattails and there's nothing going on. So you guys got questions on anything, fire away. And we'll sit here and I, wait for something to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question immediately. I mean, you just uh, kind of uh, spoke of something interesting. Um, always. So, always. <laughs> <laughs> always, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, no, no, I'm just really curious. Like you said that most traders uh, feel compelled to trade uh, due to two factors. Number one, they need to make money, and number two, they just need the action. Um, I'm just right. curious of what you've seen in your experience over the years. Uh, if, I mean, I, do you see that with these other traders that most of them, like those traders flop out pretty, pretty quickly or they don't really stay in the game very long or if they do they're not very profitable uh, compared to another breed of traders that um, are have a statistical kind of approach in their plan and that they are just waiting and watching for trades well absolutely I mean it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out I mean if you're if you're jumping in, jumping in markets and just just to trade, I mean, you are an algo dream. That's exactly what these algos want. They want to take your money. I mean, that look, you can you can try to sugarcoat as much as you want, but when you break it down, these trading firms with the algorithms that run eighty to ninety percent of the market action 
they are trying to take your money. Why, how else would they be around if they weren't getting your money, right? I mean, and that's one of the reasons that I, I believe, personally, I don't know this for a fact, but I think that's why the CME kind of started the CME or the uh, MBO data, the enhanced data to help retail traders because it got to a point there for a few years where it was just shark eat shark. So it was just firm versus firm. And, you know, I'm sure they were complaining too. And, and that's one of the reasons that I believe that they're not complaining that we have this information, that, that us retail traders have this information because um, they, they need meat, they need food to, to feast off of, right? And you guys are the food. So, you know, whether you want to accept that or not, that's what's going on. So I think, um, you know, that's why we get this type of information. But the whole point is if you're just jumping in and trading just to trade, just to get get some action, you are an algo dream. You're, you're a trading firm's dream to take your money, right? So the guys that can sit back and just wait and be it, you know, we liken it to being a sniper all the time. You're just sitting in the weeds waiting for your signal, your shot. And that's what, here we go, it's finally starting to get a little bit here, but I'm still not getting that. Well, it's not 350 yet. Um, you're just sitting waiting for your area, your setup, right? So the, these are perfect examples. When you have your zones and you know wh where you want to be PI trading. Size hey. 356 contracts. Actually, I forgot. We, we, we changed it. But hey, at least it went off. Um, you're just sitting waiting for certain areas. And then I so I wait for areas, whether it be the my zones or Ludwig levels, so on and so forth. And then I wait for the real-time volume to... Uh, come in. So uh, we just wanted to see if that was working. I don't feel like getting juked by this little time, so I'm putting these back to normal thresholds. I'm not trading off of 350. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how dead it is, but I just want to make sure this was working correctly. But you can see that was 276. Remember, this is net net, so there was probably some, there was obviously some sell ice in here that made this only look like 276. You look, you can see it at the bottom left corner there. Um, actually, let's get this going too. Yeah, so you can see that was 276. So there's obviously a little cell ice, but the computer read it off as whatever the threshold was hit, which way we added at uh, 350. So there's obviously over 350 buy ice, but then there was probably 70 plus cell ice. So that's why you're only seeing the, the net net. Um, so yeah, the you know back to your question, absolutely the traders that can sit and wait and pick their spots, those are the traders that have the best chance to make it in this business. If you don't, you're you're not going to make it. You know and you're just food for the algos yeah yeah i mean uh, so i mean like the majority i'm just curious like at um um uh, what was the name of the firm that you worked at it was uh, something tree crab tree king king, 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 king street king, crab tree. <laughs> king, king's king street king street yeah yeah i'm sorry um uh you know how the majority of the traders like uh, were they disciplined like that uh, absolutely not. That's, that was the thing. So back then it was, it was relatively easy to make money. You know, like I said, when I, that was my driver when I first got to the firm. I mean, there was some real jackasses in there, part of my language. When I got there that I was like, you would talk to them and you'd hear them talk and you'd hang around with them. Cause you know, you'd go out afterwards and on weekends and stuff with the traders. And I'd hear some of these guys talk and not, not that I'm some Einstein, but I would, I would just hear some guys talk and it's like, what, this guy is not that bright. Like, if, if this guy's printing money, I know I can make money in, the, in these markets. And that, that was my driver when I first got there. So, you know, back then it was so, you know, it was, the markets were just coming on the, onto the screen, right? The, the, the floor was drying up as far as the volume and guys were coming on the screen. But back then you can literally, guys were putting like a bid down here, literally this far apart, like 100, 100, ticks, 100 points wide in the, in the NASDAQ and they would be, it would be like hit, hit. And they get hit on both sides, and they were making money that way, and they'd come up with strategies, and guys were making money. Um, but you would have guys, like I literally had a guy when I first started, I was I had an office mate, um, roommate. Uh, that's how you, most of the traders were. Once I got it, you know, I started making money, I got my own office, which was nice, but I still was always in there talking to myself. Um, so this guy was in there, and I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating. This is a perfect example. And this guy was one of the first guys to get fired, right? He would come in there, so he'd go get a glass of water, go to the bathroom. He would literally sit down in his chair. Within two seconds, he'd just throw, throw in a market order and buy it. And then they just see what would happen. <laughs> so it's like, 
that's what I'm talking about. So that's not what obviously what you want to do. And the guy obviously blew out immediately right? or got fired immediately. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just the, the, trading is 80, 80 to 90 percent mental as far as, you know, discipline and and, and following your rules and not trading when the, the trade sucks, so on and so forth. So. It takes a lot of work and a lot of screen time to, I mean, some guys can, can nat naturally, natural gas numbers coming out here in five minutes, um, could naturally do it, but most people, it's against, that's why trading is so hard because it's against human nature, right? That's why it's like opposite. Everything that you do in trading is, is opposite of what you would do in real life or normal life, right? Like as far as, you know, that's why people, you know, the market's moving your way. And, you know, you get in a short, say you got short right here and it starts moving your way, you get out right away, right? Because you see you have money and you don't want to give that money back. That would be like you having money in your pocket and then walking outside and throwing it. You know, if the market comes back, it's like you throwing the money on the ground, right? Well, you never do that. Well, that's why it's so hard for traders to sit there and watch this come back, watch it come back and see, hey, you have your rent paid, watch it come back. That's why traders can't sit in trades because it's against your human nature. So it takes practice to be able to to withstand this and this is what we work on we talk about in my room all the time you know when when a market is in an area that is not important don't let them algo you out of the trade right like it's their them meaning the the big money that's trying to take your money right so if you're not you know say you were say you were short right here say you got short up here if we got a signal i was really hoping to get one like i said it didn't happen and say i'm short it'll say it comes back here right to there well, okay, I just had a nice profit and it comes all the way back. Am I getting out? Most traders will because they don't want to get back all their money. Well, this didn't violate anything. All it did is just come back to the same area. I and mean, that could happen. And that's what balance is, right? That can happen the entire day. So the point is, you don't want to be getting out of trades once you have your, your rules and your setups until an area is violated. So it's like if I get in this short, if I have a short setup, they say there was a, a dumb and dumber or a stop run or, or something up here. Well, I know that area should not be violated. Once it's violated, then I get out, right? Or even if you're trading these zones. So, you know, if you're just, if you don't have book map and you're just trading zones, you get short right here. Well, you got to put your stop up there because you don't have the benefit of real time volume. But you don't get out until this zone is violated, right? That's what traders cannot do. They get out because they're watching their PL and they watch the market come back and, and again, it's it's against human nature. I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying it's natural, but that's why trading is so hard because it's unnatural as far as your mental, um, you know, human human tendencies. All right, still no signals. Any any other questions, Bruce? From you or anyone yeah, else? Yeah, not not really. Um... <laughs> There's a, I don't know what they would question, but. Just overall, though, I mean, if you guys have had questions about how I do things or SI indicator and so on and so forth, ask away. You can see here, you know, everything's fractal as far as balance area. So this is overnight, right? So it's obviously not as important as the regular trading hours, but this was actually at this balance area here. Maybe, uh, Scott, um, if, if you... If you don't mind, uh, uh, there's some newer newer traders here on uh, on YouTube, uh, and uh, I just go kind of recap your your overall kind of what you're doing and in, in, in your strategy. I kind of wrote it in in the chat there, but uh, you know you're looking for it's kind of it's interesting how you you look and wait for uh, an alert on stops and icebergs that are significant. But then you kind of you work it backwards, uh, you know. That's like it's it's a signal, but it's like no 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 hold on let's go back and now check the context of the bigger picture and does it fit etc. Um, and then you go and look at uh, placing the trade and then managing the trade. Right. So I know my areas, and I or you know or the context in the market, looking at prior areas or lows. I'm just trying to find some. Uh, some good uh, setups. I don't think you guys want to see Justin Rose golf swing, but if you do, let me know. Um, let's see. Yeah. Trying to see some stuff I put in the room. Actually, let's just do this. Let's, uh, mm. 
This is probably the best way to do it. So that if we go to my room, I can show you kind of the process because then I'll show the. Because uh, I'll put in the room, like when there's setups, I'll say, hey, watch out for this. And then I'll. So this was. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Trying to remember what this stuff was. Okay, so here's a good example, I think. Let's see. So from 419. So before that, I'm so I'm watching this, right? So this is a per example. I'm watching ES. This is from a couple days ago. <coughs> so there's many things going for yes, I spurred by hey. 155 congrats. Oh, that's because the number's coming out right now. So we'll let that settle down. But so I'm watching the market, right? I know we're extended. I know we're into the red lug. That's also confluent with market profile composite high. That is an area where it could fail. I know it can fail with the red lug. And we were over two standard deviations away from VWAP. Here's VWAP. Here's one standard deviation, which they call the evaluary. Here's one and a half. Here's two. So not over two, but pretty close. So I have all these things lining up, right? Do I short automatically? No. Most guys would. There's three different things that you could trade. But I also need to see the volume confirming my area, right? That's how I trade because, once again, for the five millionth time, if you guys have been on these webinars, real-time volume runs the show. So then I wait for a setup, and there it was, right? I remember what happened on this trade, but we'll look Net at it. Yes, I spurred by NG, 150 contracts. And we'll go in there in a second. Net gas has been an awesome trade lately. So we get up to that important area that I just showed you, and then here's another thing. Here's another um, confluence, vol trigger, an important spot gamma level. So you had a, a stop run at the time. Again, I don't even know what, I don't remember what even happened here because it feels like it was 20 years ago. You have a stop run that's not real buying potentially, right? You don't know until it breaks away from this. And, you know, if it, if it holds, then it's a stop and hold, then real buying comes in behind it. But this, in, its, in essence, itself is not real buying it's someone puking or traders puking right so i know we're into an important resistance area with three or four things in my favor now i get the volume set up now i want to short this and you can see i already had this set up to short this right this was 90 percent of an atr i was ready to short that market and then that's what i put in the room and then i was looking at the real-time hero as well net gas iceberg sell ng 150 contracts right, let's just take a quick look here and i'll come back to this so Bookmap has this as well. There's real time hero, but I use the uh, spot cam on the website just because it frees up my book map memory stuff. Uh, let's see what's going on here. All right, this is definitely tradable. First signal today, yay! All right, so again, when you draw these zones for your newer peeps, you want to pick where this spiked, and you want to incorporate all the prices that it occurred or occurred in that spike. Right, so that started over here. I don't just draw my, my line and keep it here. You can see this market went all the way up here during the spike. So I gotta make sure I incorporate those prices. And they came all the way down here. You can see my, you can hear this, they're hammering. This is tick strike, we'll go over that too. And then you wanna make sure you get all the prices that came down to here. And I usually, that was buy ice. So I'll, I like to make it you know similar colors just so I know what kind of action it was. That was blue for the buy ice. Right, so then I have my zone. So that's step one. I may be missing this trade already. So we're obviously they're hammering this out of here. I mean, this thing I'm not kidding you is it's the most algo ridden, ridden market out there. You can see why it looks like a Christmas tree. But when you get real money coming in, they run over the algos and you get two, three hundred tick uh, moves. So let's quickly just take a look here. What's going on? Do we have any important areas as far as my zones? Not really. This thing has been absolutely vertical lately, and now we basically, have, you know, this is a balance area. We had balance here. This is a good example. So we had balance here. Again, balance is just guys placing bets. We broke down. What did we retest? The high volume note where the majority of the trade occurs in a balance area. What what happened? So what what two things do you guys see here that I just talked about? The two two of the four important areas of charting right here right now that you can literally go back and draw this zone later. Anyone? Tell me if anyone put, puts anything in. If not, you guys are all grounded and you're all in the doghouse. 
And the guys that are in here from my room, they better be answering this correctly or there's going to be some verbal lashings later. Anything, Bruce? Bruse, why don't you tell me or you're going to get a verbal lashing. What do you see right here? <laughs> Uh, I, 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 no, it's okay. Like, uh, no, they're starting to reply here. So uh, uh, we have uh, selling tail, retest fail, rejection. Right. Well, right. Well, just right now is what happened here. Yeah, we have the retest failure, but you had the selling tail, instant rejection. Now, directional conviction. Two very important areas. So what I'm saying is, this isn't. This is a 100% an area that you want to draw for future reference, right? So you can you draw that, and then this is where this directional conviction started. You draw that. So I can promise you, when we come back to this area, it's going to be a very if it comes back to this area, and this is what this is what trading is. Now you sit here and you wait. You're like, please come back to this area and give me a setup so I can short this market, right? Or if this comes back here and it goes right through, resistance now becomes a support, right? So now you have your area. That's number one. Right now, you wait for a setup there, but we do have a current setup here. So let's just see. I was just seeing what was down here so as far as. Can you can you take a look at that area in Bookmap and look at the order flow? Yeah. So this was uh, pretty much seventy seven eleven. That was up here. Oh wow. You got to remember the number just came out too, so that's what caused this directional conviction. But it, it's still directional conviction, right? Yeah. So that was all the way up here. Let's see. Let's see. So that was that. Remember, we just we pointed this out earlier. That was this dumb and dumber area here. This wasn't quite threshold, but that was. There was no real buying up there. That's where you had the tail, right? That's the tail. That's that. It's the rejection. That was a stop run. You had it's not real buying. It's yeah, just guys puking. There you go. And then you, the number came out, and then you had directional conviction from there. That same area, basically, from here down here, right? Now, now we're returning to this area. And now you're seeing sell ice come in. Two. That's drawable. But what I, the way I'm going to trade this is. So this is looking short-term bullish, right? We may not get back to that zone. Does that mean I won't short right here? No, because so everything's going to start firing off at one time. All right, so this is, let's just draw this most current setup. But I'm leaning to the sell side, right? Even though this, I know we're long-term bullish, but what just happened tells me this could be bearish. And especially if these areas hold, as a bearish setup, then that's going to be even better because it's in line with my thesis. Is my thesis always correct? No, they're probably wrong more than half the time. But when they line up to the volume that you're seeing, those are the best trades, right? So you can literally just say as a trader, I'm only, I have, this is my thesis, this is what I think should happen. I'm only taking setups in that direction. There's nothing wrong with that. That's like the sniper mentality. All right, so that's first and foremost. Let's see, this is, there's definitely a spike in the ATR here because of the, yeah, see, we're up to 64. Let's move this over here. Where are you at? There you can see that monster move here. This was a we went from seven dollars down to six seventy. So that was that was like a three hundred tick move right there. All right. I mean this thing again. If you if we are lucky enough, then you can see this here. This is the shorter term stuff. We're lucky enough to get back to here. That's that zone I just drew. Right. You can see that zone incorporated that balance area as well if we're lucky enough to get to here and then get a volume signal up here that is going to be an excellent percentage short because you got the directional conviction and then the, this was the tail on the, on the longer term on the hourly chart right so i don't know if we're going to get up there but we do have signals right here as far as volume signals that i will take a short and this is telling me that you pretty much want to be short until something changes right <clears throat> So I, I'm not playing for that area per se. We're on this webinar and, you know, I don't have to wait for that area. That area is very, you know, if you, like I said, if you are disciplined and you wait for that area, you have a much higher success of a, of a winning trade in that area where you know something happened and then you get real time buy. Let's take a look at our lugs. So we came down, almost tagged the blue, pretty close. We call that baby lug. It's just a different, it's another support level. 
So what, what, what story do you see here? So this is telling me something different right now, right? As far as I'm thinking short-term bearish, but what just happened? Well, we couldn't even tag the blue log rejection. And what happened here? We tried to get inside this market profile and now we're failing back out of it. That's not bearish. If this comes back down, and this is actually perfect because the setups that we just saw, so again, a return back to this area where this happened, I will take a short, even though we'd be, we'd be out of here, but we're far enough out of here where I'll take it. But say this turns around, this area holds the volume that I just drew, which we'll go back to if that holds and we get back inside here, then the tendency is to get to the other side. And that's a 200, 200 tick move if we catch it right. And that would be down here and we draw new loves and it would be glorious. So now, so we are below the yellow lug. So when we're below the yellow lug, I will take trades aggressively meaning 90% of an ATR out of the zone. So let's go to our, so we're still in this prior iceberg zone, which was this, all right? And then you had a little cell ice here, and then you had more up here. So this is 170, that's this black zone. So now I will trade this to the short side, 90% of an ATR below here. Again, ATR is very elevated right now, uh, 63 ticks. So what you could do in this situation when I tell my room as well is, you know, when a number comes out or something crazy happens and you have a spike in volatility, you could go to 20% of the hourly ATR. So let's see what that is and, and trade off of that instead. Oops, I just added a moment. As far as the entry, why can't I find? That's right. I can find my hourly chart. Hold on. the whole time um so the hour of the atr is 180 82 ticks which is that's elevated as well i mean if you take 20 percent of that is what 36 so you could you could use the 20 percent of the hourly and just use 36 instead of the 60 for right now just because you know this this atr spike is not indicative of probably this is going to die down right just because there is the number here is your spike right it's probably going to come back to this level and that's right around that 36 right so you could play 36 we'll, we'll we'll do that on this trade right so meaning let's say 36 is the hourly atr i'll put that in plug that in and i want 90 percent of that is 32.4 so 33 ticks below this zone i will i will short this aggressively 30 33 ticks below this black zone because that's the most recent thing that happened, right? So obviously I can't just between if I get 30 ticks above here, I would be out of here. So that's 70 plus 30. So that's 100 ticks I'm risking, right? So I could basically put on a two lot. So let's see. So 30, what did I say? 33 ticks. This is 88. That's 55. I'm just I'm taking the last two digits, right? So I will short this at 55. It's a good example of using a different ATR. I don't do that very often. 99% of the time. All right, some, something else is coming in. We may have to adjust this um, if I see it on here, but it's still in the same zone. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep this like it is. So now if this comes down here and fills me, which is one of the reasons why I still wanna go short. This rips up higher and I get filled and there's something up there. I'd much rather short it up there, but I will short this. So we'll be back into that market profile. And this held, this ice, that will be broken ice. And then you have this, which is a Titanic setup. When market runs into an iceberg, like Titanic, I know it's very high tech thought process there, um, that both of these are saying lower if this gets down to here. So that's why I will take that trade and then I will put my stop 33 ticks above this black zone where this sell ice came in. And then I will see what happens. The only issue with this trade, which I don't usually take, is I will be shorting Let's see how far we have into the blue lug. No, it's okay. So I don't, I, you guys have seen this in the webinars too. I don't, so say the setups all happen right here. Well, I'm not going to short this into the blue lug. I will wait for it to break down, break through here, and build new lugs, and then I'll look for shorts, right? But this is far enough. If I get filled on that, that's that'll be a very nice trade. So we'll see what happens here. <coughs> and you can see, again, if I get filled, we're back inside this 
profile, and then I expect a move that to the bottom. Size for cell NG, 400 to Congress. Okay, now that's going to change things. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a whole lot. Doesn't mean we can't trade off that, but that, yeah, look at this. Look at this coming in. 400. All right, so I'm just going to, I'm going to delete that right now, and I'm going to delete this ice zone, and I'm going to make a new one because it's in the same exact area. But I, I want to, this is still coming in. Look at this. This is huge. That you're going to see a major move off of this iceberg. I can almost promise you. I'm not saying which way, but because you got to remember, this is just traders getting loaded up, right? So someone ju just jumped in here and bought a boatload, and they just ran into a mouthful of ice, right? So this is between this here, 130, another 400. This is almost 550 icebergs in this immediate area. So I'm going to, I will leave that in for now. So now we draw this zone and I'll do the exact same thing. I'll still get in aggressively. So remember, I want to start it here because this is almost threshold on its own, this little spike here. Let's get it up to there, down to there. Look at this, look, look at the algos in this market. That's why when the big money comes in, they get crushed and it's awesome. And that's why you get these huge moves. But other than that, regardless of what happens here, I can promise you when I get in this trade, I'm going to be tortured with it for very, very, very few times will just run one way just because look at the algos in here, right? You can see them pulling, putting in, pulling. I mean, just look at the size on here. That's what this heat map is showing you, obviously, is the size. And it's just algos. See that? It's just a, it's just a big game until, they're, until they get run over by big money, and then they got to puke them up. So this is going to be fun. So 32.4, we said 33 ticks. So let's go 33 ticks below this zone now. Puts me at 60, we'll say 61. That's where I will short that. And I'm being aggressive, meaning, uh, so, because we're below the yellow lug, the yellow lug's up here, right? I will be aggressive on shorts below the yellow lug. To, to go along this, I want to see a full ATR. What do we say, 40 or 38, whatever it was. We'll check it again if it does it. Come back, retest failure, then I get in at 90%. I wait to show me that, to, to go long if we're below the yellow lug. And if I end up getting long, my primary spot to be watching will be up where that directional conviction started, up here. So we'll see how this plays out. But I'm telling you, there's gonna be, you're gonna get a big move out of here one way or another. There's some loaded up traders now, which is it's fun to watch them puke. All right, so we'll wait on that. Uh, still not one thing in equities. I did hear something in July. So if you guys are trading soybeans or wheat, roll, roll over to July. The majority of the volume is in there. Uh, this is wheat. Just checking again here just to show you. Yeah, so you can see 12, 13,000 versus 3,000. That's wheat. You guys should always be checking this to make sure you're on the, for all these products to make sure you're on the right month. Go to quotes. Soybeans, it's not, it's, there's more. I mean, it's kind of split, so I still have both products up, but, you know, obviously there's more in July right now. So just keep that in mind if you're trading those products. Uh, this is, let's get this off here. Is this July? Yeah. So I'm not seeing anything significant in here. Let's make sure I have the right one. Oh no, sorry. This is July. That was July, but that was wheat. So I heard it in soybeans. It's 150. We'll draw it. I like to see closer to 200, but you can definitely, this is my threshold. That's why it announced it, because you can see it was all one house, too. You see this where it says executed 150, E150? That means it was one player, one house, one one trader, whatever. It's usually, icebergs are usually the bigger, obviously, the funds and the bigger money, because they're trying to hide their orders, right? That's the whole premise of an iceberg, because if they put it in the order book, the market will run away from it because the algos are set up. There's algos out there set up to run away from size to make the person tra chase it. And then they fill at a worse price and then it turns around and comes right back. So that's why that's why firms use icebergs. And like I was saying, I'm pretty sure why the CME is allowing us to see this information, much to probably the dislike of these bigger firms is because we are the food for the bigger firms. So they're, if, if you know, if 
the retail traders not in the game, who, who, who are the firms going to take the money from? Each other, right? So that's why I think this is here to stay. I get, I get emails all the time. Well, what, what are you going to do if the, if the, um, the SI indicator, they take away the, the info? And they could, trust me. Be, I told you guys this many times. In the past, they used to have, I had this little box on my TT, and it showed counterparty. Every trade that you traded, you can see exactly who you traded with. So it turned into a big poker game every day. I, you know, it'd be me versus this guy Gelber, and I could see every time I traded with him. I could, lo I would load him up with like two thousand contracts, and I knew how many he had before he had to puke. And I could see like if it was a house that I've never seen before, and it was big size coming in. I, I get, I need to get out of the way, that type of thing. And shockingly, they got rid of that. I wonder why. So my point is, yes, this could disappear. I don't think it will, because they need the retail trader in here trading, or who, who the firm is going to take money from. All right, so let's just see what this is real quick. I'll answer some other questions. Let's check out our lugs. What am I doing here? Right. Here's soybean lugs. Actually, I think this is, oh, I still have this on May. That's not good. Right, let's just change this real quick and then we'll come back to it. I hate how they've changed this now. This is different in Sierra chart. Set up. Let's check out our natural gas. Natural gas. This is natural gas. All right. So this is all. This is is breath holding. Is what this is. It's just sitting in here. These buyers are like, mm, okay, well, nothing's really happening here. Yeah, so now we're starting to get some signals. So nothing happening yet. We're still in this black zone, right? This monster cell ice. And there's even more that came in after that. Another 138. So you got over 600 ice in here. That's going to be some fireworks when we get out of there. All right, let's check out Russell. This was the market that was diving when everything else was ripping earlier, which was kind of strange. Here we go. That's definitely threshold. 150 is threshold in Russell. When I say threshold, meaning I need to see that amount, that's a significant amount that you can trade off of, right? And that is from when I made my course, I went back over months and months and months and figured out the threshold for each market. And I've been watching this and the thresholds are pretty much right on from when I made the course two years ago. Um, this one's actually not on my course. I didn't put Russell in there, but uh, 150 for Russell. And if you're trading Dow, you want to use 100 for Dow. <clears throat> All right, so that's that. Step one, we got our zone. Let's look at our Ludwig levels. We're below the yellow. We're below the yellow uh, Ludwig lug, so I meaning I can short aggressively. You want to be careful shorting here unless there's some decent relative volume because we are at negative two standard deviation, and that's where you get the snapback many times. So that we we know we're at here, and then, and then you want to look. You want to look over here at market profile this is just a single day we're kind of in no man's land we're in the middle of this one here this is from a while ago and then the most recent one is here so there's really nothing telling me there I could so if that ice came in right here that would be a, a very good opportunity to go long and that'd be close to the blue look too which still may happen so that's not really telling me anything so let's look at our chart bigger picture stuff so you should have already have this stuff in your mind right you Every morning when you when pre market, you should go through all the markets you watch and see where we are, bigger picture. It doesn't take long, especially on the, on the longer term charts, because it's not much different day to day, right? But you can see here, this is interesting. From a shorter term perspective, this looks bearish to me. Anybody tell me why? What do you see happen there? What is that, Bruce? Well, it, it, it's below the um, uh, uh, VPOC there, or most traded level. Failed, rejected. Right. So, yeah. Right. And then, it's a failed breakout, yeah. right? So it tried to break out. So all these longs are like, yeah, got it. Oh, wait, no. Okay, well, I'll hold. Oh, wait, this we're in trouble. We got to puke. That's what that is. But which is bigger? This is more recent. This is a little bigger. This is multi, looks like a week and a half balance, right? So this could, 
just come to the top of this, where this little balance happened on top of the bigger balance, it could just bounce, right? But shorter term, this is not what you want to see if you are long. So now what will happen, so this could do anything here, right? This could turn around, bounce off the top of this guy, come back. Um, I mean, again, you got to favor the most recent action, and that would be short, especially if we get inside a market profile and so on and so forth. But if we get through this high volume note, actually, you can make this a bigger one here. If this gets below where this directional conviction started, you're going to see a significant move lower. But right now... You could short this, but you got to be very cognizant of the top of this balance and then anything else that is in. So that means, say we short this setup. I'm watching very closely, just the, even the top of this, right? And that's not a lot. That's not very far away. Let's see where that's at. It's pretty close to the blue lug. Blue lug's on here. So I will short it, but you got to be very careful here. So this is kind of mixed signals, right? So when I look at that, I don't have a clear view of what's going on. When you when you look at a market and it's confusing, which is going to happen a lot, just don't trade it. You know, you don't you don't have to trade every setup that comes in these markets, right? But if you're using this, you have the ultimate edge. It doesn't mean you just automatically every time you see one, you trade it, right? I do it most times for my room and stuff just to show them the right ways to trade this. But this is a market where I just looked at it. It looks short term bullish. It looks long term bearish. I'm sorry, short term bearish, long term bullish. That's confusing, so don't trade it. All right, so 38.4 is the ATR. I just wanna see which way we break out of here in ATR to determine what setup this is. So we need to see 69 to the upside that did not get anywhere close to there, right? So we don't know what this setup is. So once again, guys, the reason I'm using, guys and girls, the reason I'm using ATR is to determine what this is because once it can get an ATR away from this, I know what type of setup it is. So is this gonna be, a titanic setup where the buyers run into a mouthful of buy ice and then it holds and goes lower or is it going to be broken ice so this is the big money is the big money always right no they're, they're wrong sometimes and you want to take advantage of that too and that's what's called broken ice so if this ends up getting an atr above here these guys were wrong and then you can go long right if your if your other stuff lines up <clears throat> let's take a quick look here Still breath holding in natural gas. I cannot wait to see the breakout of this zone. It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, so we're still on this zone in Russell. Where is uh, where are these other markets? Even though nothing's happening in them. <clears throat> All right. So this is this is getting interesting for a buy potentially, or I'm considering a buy. Right? We talked about this. I'm very bummed that there was not a short set up here. We talked about this all this morning. Why this could fail? That would have been an excellent short opportunity. Didn't happen. It is what it is. That's how I trade. You could have said, "Hey, I love that. I love that idea. Failure, failure, failure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop in there and put myself above there. Right? If you wanted to risk 25 points on the trade, then have at it. I did not do that. But now, what are we coming into? Top of this, where we just gapped out of. So, what is a gap? Directional conviction coming right to this area. Top of balance, or any shorts that were caught or holding their breath, now is their chance to get out, right? That's what causes the retest failure. That's the whole premise of that. So this is an area right here, right now, anywhere in here, if I get a setup, that is going to be a good long opportunity. So say that does come here and I take my long and then I lose, well, that's gonna be even a better opportunity to the short side because this will be a fail breakout of this guy, right? So it's like you take your most likely scenario trade, and if that doesn't work out, well, it's what should have happened didn't. Now you make more money going the other way. You can you make back your loss plus plus some, plus more, way more, right? But right now I'm looking. I will really be happy if there is a long setup because of what I just, we just talked about. And then what do you see here? We're inside this. That's not bullish, but. Here's the point of control, which you can see mattered. So if this comes down a little lower, we're still in that area I just showed. We'd be pretty close to the blue lug. All I would need to see is a volume setup, and then that would be a good percentage risk reward long. Right? If for some reason it just goes right through there, I'll lose on my long if I get long, and then I'll turn around and look for shorts, and the bigger move will be on the short side. Right? So the whole idea of... Uh, you know, markets obviously 
rotate, oscillate all the time, right? When you're going against the bigger picture, your, your moves, so like this down move, is probably most likely going to be shorter lived and the bigger moves are going to be up, right? So it doesn't mean you can't take shorter term trades. We are day traders, but just realize if you take a trade counter trend, it's probably going to be short lived. And that's that's the whole premise of this. If I, you know, if I were to get, even if I were to got short, if there was a setup up here and I got short, I'd definitely be looking to get out right now. Just because, I mean, maybe a little lower than what we just talked about, but I'm not expecting a big move unless what happened, what I just said, if, if we end up having a failed breakout of this of this ma of this balance area, then I expect a big move down and things will change, right? But right now, I'm thinking that the selling will be short lived and the bigger moves will be up. If this does this and this, then I think the bigger move is going to be down and the up moves will be shorter lived, right? So you got to have all that in mind when you're putting on your trades for you know getting out, taking profits, so on and so forth. <coughs> all right, I a lot of gas. Any questions, Bruce? So I can stop talking. Yeah, just a minute here. I think we're pretty well here. Everyone's uh, pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty quiet. We see someone typing at the moment. Um, no, nothing. Right. So we've gotten an ATR out of the zone. An hourly ATR, and I think we've even got a five-minute ATR, even an elevated ATR. Let's see here. 59. See how it's starting to pull back now because it just incorporated that the number, the uh, natural gas inventory number. So it's 59.73. So we've definitely gotten uh, an hourly, 20% of an hourly, and what I usually trade, again, is the five-minute from here. So that was at 32, last two digits. It's got up to pat over 92. That's over 60 ticks. So this is a full five-minute ATR out of this zone. So now we've determined what this setup is. First of all, this is canceled. I'm not going short this now off of this setup because we violated this. To the, if this thing's truly bearish, it should not violate this an ATR to the upside. So now we know this is broken ice. Somebody came in here with huge sell ice and just got it shoved down their throat. Now what I'm looking for is a retest failure and I will go long and I will be watching for that area that we talked about to, to potentially take prof profits. Can't talk all of a sudden. There you go. Right? So look at this. It's the battle of the tails. Selling tail, little the down move, here's the number. Now a huge buying tail. But we know in this buying tail was what? Broken ice. That's more significant than this. There was a little dumb and dumber up there, but I think this is way more significant. So now if we get a retest failure of that broken ice, I'll be watching for a move back into this zone and possibly even higher, maybe even to this zone where this direction we just started. And this market is long-term bullish, obviously. The thing has gone vertical for weeks, right? So you have a tail, one of the four important areas of charting, and you know what's in that tail. That is an excellent risk-reward trade if it retests. The reason I'm waiting for a retest is because we're below the yellow look, right? So I would love to be tickled. Came back to that area. Here's that cell ice. Then I'll go long, and I'll be looking for huge move up. And what do you see here? Try to get inside this profile composite. No dice. That ice was all in here. That would be a retest of the top of that, basically. Boom. That's what I'm looking for. So now we wait. So I'm going to put actually so I don't miss this because it happens to me all the time when I'm on these webinars. Uh, let's see. So you go to your cloud notes, add edit note, notifications, enable notifications. This is what it sounds like. So pretty. There you go. So now if this comes down here, it will alert me that we're retesting this zone and then I can put my orders and get ready for uh, the fireworks to the upside. That's that. Uh, come back to that. Actually, let's look at what that looks like today. This is the real-time hero. Uh, again, Bookmap has it, or you can get it on his website. Waiting for market to open. Pretty sure the market's already open. So 
So this is basically just showing you the options hedging or options activity versus where the market is. So let's go to uh, SPX. So what do you see here? So this is bolstering. This isn't crazy divergence, but you can see the options. This is total puts and calls. You can break it down to, again, I do not claim to be a spot gamma options expert at all. I use it in the very basic sense, and that's all I need it for. I don't need to know every little detail and to confuse myself when I trade, right? I know market's down here. That's the black line, and I know the put call ratio is up here. That's a divergence. Sometimes you'll see it way up here, right? That's just a signal. It's not, this is not a red light, green light. I see people in the book map hero or the book map uh, spot gamma. I mean, not book map, but the spot gamma channel on discord all the time. Like that didn't work. There was a, there was a divergence, a huge divergence and the market kept going down. This is not red light, green light, right? But you want to pay attention to this when it is in line with everything else that you're that we're talking about or you're looking at, right? So this is just good to know. Okay, this isn't a crazy divergence, but it is a divergence. Market went down, options activity did not follow it down. That is another case for bulls, right? Now we're just I'm just waiting for a setup in the area we're at. Here's what the spider looks like. See if that looks any different. It's not crazy, right? But it's decent. Let's look at QQQ. Which is the tracking stuff for the NASDAQ. Uh, where's that? Nothing crazy, but it's definitely a divergence, right? Not much, though. So it's not, you know, again, I, I just I keep an eye on this. Does it mean I won't take a long or I wouldn't take a short? No, but this is good to know. Another thing that I watch that's actually not available to the public, and I'm not sure why. I mean, I talked to him yesterday. I guess they're working on it, and it hasn't been. Um, they don't want to onboard new guys, but this is the edge. You can see here. So this is just showing you all 500 stocks. If you remember my room, you can see this in the Squawk channel as well as, well as this stuff. But um, you can see up here we were overbought. This is all 500 stocks in the S&P index, and it's telling you what percentage are above or below their five-minute market profile or aka TAS boxes or market profile so all you need you don't even need to know you just need to know so for instance this is what time was this this is right at the open so we were at we got up to 74 percent meaning 74 percent of the stocks of all 500 stocks were above their five minute boxes and when you get that markets you know if you get 75 80 90 the markets will revert and you don't want to be initiating longs up there so that was right at the open you can see what happened right at the open. We rallied, the thing was overbought, here's your pullback. So when you can match that up to real-time setups, it's absolutely golden. You can ask my room, they're on this thing all the time talking about it because you do not, if anything, you know, again, if this market's up here or this line's up here, it doesn't mean we can't go higher in the market. We can go up to 100%, right? All 500 could be over their five minute boxes. But you, if anything, you don't wanna be initiating longs if you see that, right? That's number one. And if you did, didn't they shoot along up there, you took it right on the chin, right? So that's why we watch that. So right now you can see it's really nothing. This just shows you it's choppiness. Inside, 50% of the 500 stocks are inside their boxes. When I say boxes, it's just this, right? So imagine this as one of the, one of the, um, this hasn't drawn it, oh yeah. Imagine this is one of the stocks that comprise the index. That, that's, that's tracking, right? So here's your box. It draws them. This is the box. There's a box here, and then there's one here. Right? So this is starting to break out of it. So that's all it's, all it's looking at. And it's a great judge of, you know, for overbought, oversold, temporarily, short term. So the volume picked up a little bit on that down move and it's still pretty pathetic. I mean, that's pretty sad. You can't, if it turns yellow, that means it was more than two times. That's when you want to pay attention, right? Or, I mean, if it's over hundred, it's good. This volume's not bad here. So you're probably going to get some balance here and you're going to get a decent move out of here because there's enough people participating. When you start to see this stuff, you don't want to be participating because you get this stuff. And that's when the algos take all your money. So you want to wait. You can use this as one of your rules i don't trade unless i see at least normal volume for this time period for the last 30 days which is what this is what this is showing and if you for the last few bars if you don't see that if you see a bunch of red you do not want to be trading unless you like to be algoed 
<clears throat> you could be a range trader in that type of environment, but again, I hate trading that way because every time I trade a range, that's when it breaks out of a range. So I don't trade that way. All right, so again, nothing. Oh, this was close. Let's see here. <clears throat> this is like 6,000 today in this market. Absolutely nothing. Let's draw this. Again, threshold 700. I rarely go below that, right? But you can see here's the swipe. There's a thousand swipe as well. I think we actually had a little more over here. I have to adjust this. 400. Yeah, so that's incorporated. So between between these two icebergs, you can make it one big zone. This is what I was talking about earlier. We were actually looking at natural gas, and I was going to combine the two, but they're too far away. This is not too far away. You can, this is five points, so you can combine these two. Right? Here's two icebergs. These equal 1,000. It's 6, 612, 620, and this was over 400. Oh, there's your retest. There's your retest. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so let's hurry up and check our, and when I say hurry up, I mean hurry up, because this thing could rip back on our points in the blink of an eye. 55.62 <coughs> is our ATR. I think we should probably use that just because of the volatility, even though the number, even without the number, this thing's nuts. It's pulled back a little bit. So 90% of a ATR 50, of the 55 is 50 ticks. So 50 ticks out of here, I will take this long. There's your retest, almost to the exact, hey, look at that exact tick. Shocking. Same patterns over and over, guys, does not matter what market. So 50 ticks above here, we'll just put that at 30, put it at 32 is the bottom of that, top of that zone. So 82, I will go long. You see, I mean, this thing just spikes like, <laughs> you catch a runner in this thing and you're looking at, Huge, huge trade. So I get filled on there, then my stop's got to go 50 ticks below this zone. So I'm risking like 150 ticks. That's about my risk. You know, if you want to really look at it, I think, it, yeah, we have natural gas in here. So if I'm risking 150 ticks, again, this is part of my room. You get access to this. I can put on a two lot based on my account value. You only want to be risking a percent half or 2% of your, your account value per trade. Again, if you're trading micros, just divide this by it's one tenth of the value. So if you have a twelve thousand dollar account, thirteen thousand dollar account, you'd be risking two hundred fifty dollars on the trade instead of twenty five hundred. So that's how we work that. So that is the correct size on this trade. Let me get my other accounts going here. What's that price? Eighty. When I say it was eighty three, eighty two. <clears throat> Any questions, Bruce? Uh, YouTube is good. Yeah. Uh, Razor knows that, that those breath meters are from, uh, um, uh, I forget the name of it. What is it, Scott? Uh, uh, it's, it's Taz, but they, it's not available right now to the public. If you go on the site, like if you Google, the, it's called the Edge. Google the Edge as you'll go on there, and it's not available. They're redoing it, and they don't want to bring on new people. I don't know the, the exact reason, but the point is, it's not available right now. Probably shouldn't be showing stuff that's not available. You can see it in my room, but other, when it comes, when it's available again, I just talked to them yesterday, and it's, it's supposed to be coming out here soon. So uh, I'll let you guys know. But it's a, if anything, it keeps you out of trouble when you're buying and then overbought, buying or selling, and when it's overbought or oversold. That'll make people want um, it even more. Right, exactly. So, again, another perk of my room. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see what's going on here. Oh, there's another test of that zone. I gotta turn that off. Yeah. If you guys have any any questions uh, for Scott or like you you know information on his. Uh, uh, website or his uh, educational course it's there in the chat all right so now you know if this say this just comes and blows right back down through the zone well i'm not i'm not going to go short this particular setup right this is the way i trade it you could if you want if your money you do however you want this is just for me trading thousands of these knowing what what should happen what shouldn't happen 
Why? Because this has got a full ATR above here. I'm not, this turns around and blows right through this, this cell ice, which is that. I'm not going short on that. I'll wait for a new setup just because it's already shown that it can get an ATR above there. That's not bearish, short-term bearish. So that's why I just will take a long off of this. I will not take a short. So that's why I wait for retest failure, right? I don't just, we've seen this actually a few times in the room lately where you get the ATR and then it comes back in the zone and goes right through. Well, I, I never put the trade on because I need to see it fail back out of there, right? If it doesn't fail back out of there, I'm not, but you could, again, like I said, you can come up, once you get good at understanding this and, and trading them, you can say, there's enough that there's a huge buying tail here. As soon as this comes back in the zone, I'm buying it. I don't need to wait for 50 ticks out of here. I'm buying it right here. Go ahead. You can do whatever you want. Could, could it do that? Absolutely. It's probably 80% chance it does that, right? But I've just found the safest way to trade these is to wait for it to show it can move back out of here versus getting in right here and watching it rip right through it, right? But you can get along right here and not have to risk another 50 ticks to get in. You can do whatever you want. It's your money, right? So, again, it's just because of my experience of using those. That's how I trade them. <clears throat> like I say, every single week, there's art and science to this. Right? This is the science. There's no disputing. There was over 500 ice here. The art is how you trade the zone. Recommend until you know what you're doing, you trade it like I do. And then once you get better at it, you can put any spin you want on it and trade it how you want to trade it. But the, the, there, there's no disputing there was 500 sell ice there. So how you want to interpret that and trade it, that's up to you. All right, still on this zone here. Let's see if we got any broken up volume in NASDAQ today. And I've had no alerts in here either. Just liquidity getting their fills as usual. Let's see, run the show. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right, so let's, you know, I will take, I will take this trade though because it has a thousand. And remember we said, this is an area where you want to be long. So I would not be surprised. I'm not surprised, I'm expecting this to hold and move higher based on everything we've talked about. I gotta turn that alert off, it keeps touching it and setting it up. Cancel that. There we go. Now we're just waiting to get filled. Actually, I wanna know when I get filled now, at least. Let's go here, add edit note, notifications, enable notifications, okay. So when, if I get filled, then I'll know, I'll know. I gotta use that more, I do not, I do not use that feature enough. All right, um, yes. <clears throat> so my rules are, if we're below yellow lug, so we, we have that iceberg, and I know we're in a, an important area where that should hold and move higher, right? But I'm still not gonna go long aggressively because we're below the yellow lug, and that's just the way I play it. You can, once again, you can say, that's enough, we'll be moving out of this. I know this is bullish. I know we're returning to that balance area that we talked about. You can go along the minute it breaks out of here, right? Or 90% out of here. I'm gonna wait for full ATR retest failure to go long on this setup here. That's what I'm drawing on there is the setup. So on the short side, actually, I could, I, I'm technically supposed to go short aggressively, right? Because we're below the yellow lug. But is this a good area to take a short? Right here, no. Right, because you're, all you're doing is coming back to that. So I, this is what I'm talking about. You don't just, you shouldn't just be blindly taking every setup. Like there's going to be instances where the context is king, where you're like, you know what, this is not. I know the volume's saying short, and it probably shouldn't, but I don't want to go short until it violates this high volume note. Then I want to go short, right? Because this has a very good chance of doing this. So I. It's hard for me to do, but I'm going to pass on a short on that. And I'm just going to look for a long here. Again, if we get a little lower, but you know, on the, you know, on the flip side, an argument could be, well, guess what? If this is bullish, then why are you seeing bear, a bearish setup? Like if this does get an ATR below here, 90%, why is that showing a bearish setup? Like that shouldn't happen if this is bullish. And you can argue that too. But I just know my odds of a short are not good of working until we can get through there. That's the better place, a better odds to trade to take shorts below here. You could take a short though on this setup if you want. I'm gonna pass because I'm just so sick of getting short and then having that this is tick strike. Um, again, we talk about this every week. This is just telling you the size of the orders and the speed of the orders coming coming in. It's like an audible alert. 
uh, but it's good to see what these stocks are doing. But every time I get short, then it's just like a, it's, I call it waterboarding because there's nothing worse than watching your position going against you visually and then hearing it too. It literally, I, I've never been waterboarded, but I can imagine that's what it feels like. So point is, I know if I get short, I'm going to have this thing going, -na 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 -na, and I don't really want to do that right now. So I will wait, hopefully just take the long here. Again, if we get below this high volume node, I'd say 40, 44, 60 ish, then I will be gladly taking shorts aggressively. And that's part of being patient, right? Like, yeah, you can say, okay, I was patient all day. I finally got my setup. I, I, there's finally a setup in here. I'm taking it. Okay, I can understand that, but it's still not the best place to go short, right? So let's just see if we can get that. <clears throat> so this thing just covered this entire zone. Held. So any of these, so whoever this was is the one that felt the heat. So there's a good chance when it comes back, they start peeling out and that's what causes the, the next move, the next wave up. Again, if this goes right through there, then that's gonna be telling you something in multiple, one, that zone didn't hold, two, we get below this buying tail, you're coming down here. That's my guess. It's my opinion, obviously, but that's where I think we're coming. We may stop right here, this was a smaller, this is an important area too. You can see how it respected it, right? So you had a little balance here. Here's your directional conviction. Came back, it says right where it held. So if, if say something new comes in and we break this tail, you wanna watch this area here, which is not too far away. But if you break down through here, then you're coming to this zone here. And what's this zone? This zone is basically where this gapped up. That's directional conviction that led it up, ended up leading in this whole move, right? And it's the top of a, this balance here which was balance on top of balance. So this zone's really important. If you do, if we do get short, if I do get short, I will really be watching this 640 area to be getting out of all, if not, or most, if not all. <coughs> all right, so we'll just wait there. This thing is really tempting me to go short, I'm trying not to do it. But like I said, flip side, you should not be seeing bear setups if this is truly bullish, right? That's definitely an ATR below that zone. So the ATR right now is 6.26. So I, what I will try for this because we're on the webinar, I usually would be, you know, if the, if the bigger picture stuff wasn't against me, I would have been short 90% of an ATR, right? Which I'd be in right now. What I will do, if this does this, this retest, then it fails, then I'll try a short, but I not, I'm not excited about it. If it works, it's going to be huge because we're going to violate that high volume node most likely and this thing's going to crash. And high volume node, the bottom is basically 4460. It's still not the best place to go short, but since we're on the webinar and there's enough, that's the conservative entry anyway, I will try that short. The long idea is done with because why? We got an ATR below this zone and that, that disqualifies it for a long for me. So let's see if we get retest failure. Um, edge is fine. It's not over bought or oversold, so that's not going to come into play right now. Let's see, we're down here. Let's see, forty-seven percent are inside their boxes, so that's just choppiness. Hey, there's some Russian news. I don't know if you guys heard that lately. Every every five minutes for sixty days. Volume's not terrible, it's not great, but at least it's normal. Right? So that could, remember that the volume was okay in here, so like I said, that would probably lead to a bigger move out of here, so we'll see what happens. Wasn't crazy volume, but. So if we get retest failure, I will short. Again, if I was normal circumstances without that balance area right there, I would have plugged in in my handy dandy spreadsheet. You go in here and you plug in the ATR. I know there's a way to do it. Someone put it in that room a while ago. You can do it on think you're swimming. You just haven't done it yet. And that was about two months ago. I did say it's the ATR. So 5.63 is my 90%. So I would have been Net in. Gas iceberg cell NG, 154 contracts. Right, it's getting interesting in that gas because um, it's violating that zone. So 5.63, so 5.75 points, I would have been short normally out of the zone. So that means I would have been short Let's just say 4480. So that's a 74 quarter. I would have been short. So I would have been short right here in normal circumstances. Right there. 
might be already bitching, pardon my language, that I got filled basically close to the tick and now it's already back. So if it does this and this, then I'm gonna try a short. Not excited about it, but again, it'll be a failure of the zone too, then that's not bullish either. If this thing's bullish, why are you seeing bearish setups? If this thing's bullish, it should do this and then come right back through here. If it fails again, then I'm telling you something. Oh, here comes the waterboarding too. I'm glad I'm not short. Wow, I'd really be bitching right now. So you guys are so lucky I didn't put that short on. All right, so this is now, let's see if we got an ATR below here. Remember we were looking at this dark zone. Let's, I'm just gonna get rid of this. This was way long ago. And we've had something since then. What do you have here? That's 170, so that's a brand new setup. And it's, we basically violated that other zone. So I'm gonna take this aggressively to the short side because we're below the yellow look, right? It's a whole new, let's make this a different color so I don't confuse myself. What the official says Russia is treating the failed international free war objective. This still is made position to the one frame. well now we should begin the Fed speaker, right? I mean it, yeah. I don't know, he's already speaking, I think. There's like five Fed, Fed speakers a day lately. I, I just don't know what's going on. It's just insanity. Like yesterday was the beige book. It didn't even matter. Like there was like four speakers before that. It's just a straight, I've never seen that before. Every day, they just come out like and just talk every single day. And the market reacts every single day. All right, so let's check our ATR again in here. It's down to 53.7. 50.7, 90% of that is 48.3. So 49 ticks below here, I will go short. Problem is we're getting closer to that blue lug, so I gotta be careful when I'm not shorting into the blue lug. So what did I say, 49, so 24, 25, that's where I'll be short this. Last two digits I'm talking. Remember, I'm shorting aggressively because we're below the yellow lug. See, this is what I'm getting afraid of, though, because we're getting closer and closer to this. Let me get this out of here. To this blue lug. I don't want. I mean, we're far enough away from it. I'll take that trade. But if we were like right here, I, I don't. I'm not taking shorts into that because I know how powerful these things are. So, but we're back in here, right? So it looked like it was going to do that, but that setup didn't hold. So something's up. If we break that tail, say goodnight to natural gas, at least short term. Oh, I forgot about this. So here's a retest of this zone, too. So this was the 200 cell ice. I forgot all about this. All right, so this is retest failure. Obviously, we went an ATR below here. Not obviously. Let's confirm that, but it looks like it. Here comes the waterboarding, by the way. I'm so glad I'm not sure yet. 37.5, so 38 ticks. We definitely got 38 ticks below here. 40 ticks puts me at 76. Real close. Look at that. Look how close. That's just, these are just, this is, we know it's algo ridden, right? These, these are the ATR algos that snap it right back. But that was an ATR. So now what I'll do, just can't wait to short this. It's going to be so fun. 37.6. It's 33.84, so 34 points below here. Or ticks, not points. Net gas iceberg cell NG. 153 contracts. 86. By, by the way, uh, Scott, we, uh, um, we'll have an interesting product coming out soon. I just want to just let people know about it. I'll, I'll demo it um, and have more information about it soon. Uh, but uh, being able to spot that algo, that market-making algo, um, uh, is going to be, um, we have some kind of new tools for that, uh, for, for MBO, for futures and for uh, Coinbase Pro in um, uh, crypto. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty Let's cool. Take a quick look. Everything book map is pretty cool, Bruce. Come on. <laughs> so actually, I should have been in this one aggressive too, right? Because we're below the L look. So, and that's fine. I just avoided that. You guys didn't have to hear me bitch on this up move, which is good for you. 
but now if we retest fail, I'll be short this too. So it's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna be short both, both the markets that I don't want to be short because of where we're at, right? And right but at it doesn't, 11.30 East Coast right, time. Right, right at my worst time period. Hey, should yeah. we show that? Let's show that real quick just to get me really going before before the torture treatment starts. Let's just and take a quick little ruin look. your golf uh, afternoon. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at how I do it at this time of day. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, I've lost 71. Oh, only 100,000 at this time of day. Is that good? That's why you don't trade this time of day, Scott. That's what I told myself for 20 plus years. I mean, it's, I'm still profitable, but I would be four times as profitable if I didn't trade between 10 and 12. This is my overall. I've taken a beating the last couple of days. The trade's been really bad. Weird, I should say. So I've had a little drawdown here, but still profitable. But add another 100000 to that if I can just get up and leave. I do live in Arizona, so I could just go to the golf range and... and I'm pretty sure I could have found $100,000 or not thrown away $100,000 and had fun on the golf range. That, so this is Traders Think. You guys should all have something like this. Discounts on my website along with everything else. Um, you want to keep track to know that stuff, right? So I know that and I know my worst, worst day of the week is Monday. And it just keeps happening. There's another 30 grand down the drain. If I just didn't trade on Monday. That's harder to do, obviously, with my room. But the hourly is not hard to do. I'm not giving. I'm not. I'm, I'm not on my webinars at that time, so I have no excuse. Except that I'm a moron sometimes. All right. So I'm. I'm going to use an <clears throat> a new indicator I just created, uh, Scott. It's yeah. uh, in in the uh, Discord chat. Should Scott trade at this time? Thumbs up icon if yes. Thumbs down icon if no. <laughs> so we're gonna we're well, gonna we're gonna we're gonna hold you to it here. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I hold myself to it every day and I still don't do it. So I've been better lately, at least with my auto trader program. I don't, I try my best not, I rarely trade. But what you could do, there are exceptions. You, you say, I don't trade between 10 and 12 central unless I start seeing really high relative volume. Then you can trade it. Like you start seeing this thing pop up and you see yellow 200%. Yeah, then you can trade it. Other than that, you're asking for Algo City. And that's why I get beat up. That's why every trader basically gets beat up at that time of day because it's algos running you ragged. All right, so we still haven't done anything here. This is not gas. I'm telling you, when this area breaks, you're going to get the big move. It's just a lot of breath holding here. Um, we did not get a. We did get a new setup, so I'm going to actually delete this long. Whoops, that was the wrong one. So now what I need to see, remember we're waiting for a retest failure. I just got thought about Russell. Oh, wait. Hold on, I'll come back to that. Forgot to put my order in here. Quality, good trading. I thought I put my order in here, so I just cost myself three points. All right, so short that. That's, that's just terrible trading. 6.43 is the ATR. I'm not being waterboarded at least. Got that going for me. 6.43. 5.78. So six points above the zone is where I will step out of this trade. Again, I just cost myself three points because I wasn't watching it. I didn't put my order and I don't know why I thought I did. So 9150 is where I'll step out of this trade. I probably have too many contracts on as well, like usual. Hold on. There you go. So that's 20 points of risk. So I, I already know that I, I shouldn't have three on. I didn't think it's only oh, we got oh we get Fed talk. That's what it is. My bad. How, how silly me. I could put three on. 20 points. Three. Uh, it's just it's just I, I just I've never seen this in my 20 years. Uh, there's a Fed speaker every hour, every day. <laughs> Markets are not liking it. So this is getting interesting though, right? Like I still don't think these shorts are going to work based on the structure stuff. But if they do work, they're going to be monster trades to the downside. Not that I don't think they're going to work, but the odds are against me of these working based on what we've talked about this entire webinar, right? And Q is real close too. Look at this. This is the most recent. That's what we gapped out of. Here's your eye volume node. Gets through there, coming at least down to here, and then to zero. That'll all happen today. So prepare for zero there. 
I'm joking, by the way. Um, <clears throat> You know, Russell could pause here, but if this gets motoring, you're looking at least to this where this directional conviction started. This could be a really nice trade too. Again, the odds are it's gonna bounce, but we'll see. Not odds are, but it has a better propensity, a more likely propensity to bounce until we can violate the structure. Right? All we are is the bottom of the zone that I drew based on all this other stuff. Right? Keep talking. Let's go. Start hitting these guys. So if we get through this, then you're going to get, you're coming down here. Yeah, this I'll could be a good one, Scott. <clears throat> yeah, until you said that, thanks for jinxing it, Bruce. Appreciate it. Oh, this is going to be a bad one, Scott. <laughs> Bruce, Scott, you've got no chance. Then then we'll go. Uh, I, don't think you, I, don't think you, I don't think you've shown any propensity to mush trades, so. So again, I entered, I should have been in 90% of an ATR. What did I say? That was 74 quarter. I should have been in. So I missed it by three points. So what's three points when you're risking 20? All right, so we got that on. We got this on. I just got to put my stop on this as well. Short Russell. Hey, Fed's talking. Oh, in case you guys didn't know, Fed, Fed, the Fed guys can put on trades too. So if that's not, if you want something even more ridiculous, I just, I, I to this day, like I can see, I can't see lawmakers either, like Pelosi and all the, the stock trading stuff, but how can Fed members who dictate policy put trades on? How is that possible? Could anyone tell me, please? See, now I'm starting, now I'm starting to lose a little bit. <laughs> so Alec, Alec, is, Alec is already all over it. He says, uh-oh, there he goes again. <laughs> I, I just, it just, I can't, I, my mind, I can't wrap my mind around that. How is, how is that legal? Hey, let's go ahead and uh, let's short the market and let's come out and say something hawkish. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make millions. <laughs> but anyway, 30, 34 ticks above here is 90% of an eight current ATR puts me at 65 to stop out of this trade. Uh, here we go. So I'm trading at the worst time of day. While a Fed guy is talking, what, what could and the, and I'm trading against the bigger picture or intermediate term, short term trend, what could go wrong? <laughs> keep keep popping these guys. All right, there's still a divergence, but this is turning over a little bit. That's QQQ. Let's check out the spy. SPX. I don't like that's going up. Again, this is not red, green light, red light, green light. This thing can still sell off a little bit. <clears throat> Spy looks a lot worse as far as the, there's no divergence. All right, so let's look at some areas where we may be getting out here if this does work out. <coughs> so we got there's really nothing lug-wise till down here, and that's the actual goal. And that will be, I may get out of one here if we struggle at the top of this. So that price is, because that's a very important area, top of the market. Oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, 20, 2024. Let's just put that in now, because I'm sure I'll be on another screen and miss it. Actually, I'm gonna get out of two there because I, I, I'm short two markets at the worst time of day, it's not a good time. So we'll get out right there, two of them. Let's see if we can get a move down there. And then let's check out ES, where we will possibly want to get out. ES has been giving me the finger lately. Give me the finger yesterday, bad. All right, see, we're right in that. I probably shouldn't even have taken this trade. So you got baby lug and blue lug. So again, I don't like to take shorts when we're right in front of the blue look, because I know, especially in uh, this context, so hopefully we can get a swipe down here. Uh, if we get to blue lug, I'm get, I'll get out of all of them. I'm not, I'll wait for new lugs and, and a new setup. I don't mess around with the lugs. So, I mean, still another nine points away. I like that they're buying the VIX, that's good. 
You want to see, obviously, the stocks that run the indices that the futures are, are derived from. You want to see those getting hit. These are the most highly weighted stocks in the, in the indices, right? So you obviously want to see those get hit, but then when they're buying the VIX, which is obviously correlated, opposite correlated, that's a good sign too. So everything looks perfect for this trade. I don't know what could possibly go wrong here. <laughs> so what do we say that log was? Put that in too. What am I doing? We're already close to baby lug, that light blue lug or whatever color that is. That's at 65.50. I'm going to get out of one there. 65.75, and then the other one's at basically 62. So I'll just get out of all of them. I, I, again, I don't need to. Again, I can get back in, too. It's not like the trade's completely over. So 62. Why is this not working? We're close to baby lug right here. What I say, 65, 75? That's why. 65, 75. Why does this keep reverting to back to zero, Bruce? Do you know that? That's, that's never done Yeah, before. yeah. Um, the um, size. Oh, yeah, reset? yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. I, did you just add that? I've never even no, seen no, that we've, before. We've had it for a long time. Okay. Of course, Mr. Biotech. Shocking. Come on, you can do it. Keep talking, Daily. It's working out well. All right. I must have buy a tick. Not surprising. Again, I... I Probably would, you know, especially because I missed my entry at 74. I chased this down three points. This is not a good place to short. You're at close to blue lug. We already talked about the bigger picture. Close to blue lug. We're at two standard deviation from VWAP. This is an area where you can get that. I'm just hoping I at least get out of one of these things before that happens, before this just turns around and starts to waterboard me. <clears throat> Let's go. Talking daily. All right, nothing's happening here in natural gas shit either, so. But I will go long again if this gets ATR retest failure of this last one. Looks like we got ATR again. 52. Top of the zone was 90, 679. I just using the last two digits. 90 got up to. Didn't quite get there. So we didn't get an ATR above there yet. Hey, I got filled. What do you know? What do you know? Give me the blue look. So again, and the other reason I wouldn't have put this trade on, right? What do we say I'm risking? 20 points. So I'm going to try to make basically 12 points. I'm risking 20 to make... All right, I'm going to get out of these here on this little puke. I'll leave one in. Come on. Hit it. Right at the blue lug. Watch this thing bounce. A little lower. Oh, crap, I gotta bring my daughter to school. Hold on a second. All right, guys, I forgot. I, I, I lost track of time. We're, I'm almost two hours in this webinar. I gotta bring my daughter to school. My wife's out of town. Um, so, of course, it's starting to pick up now, but. I'm just gonna get out of this right now because I gotta go too. So it was a little, it was a small winner. Again, I missed my entry by three points to see if I got filled on my Russell. I didn't realize, how have we been on this long when nothing's been going on? All right, I got filled out of these two, or filled on two of those. Get out of this. All right. All right, so there you go. Um, we've talked about this. This thing's not bullish, bearish yet like bigger picture bearish, this is it. Like this market needs to hold, the ES needs to hold right here. If this gets below here, you're gonna get, you should get a move back down in here would be my guess. You wanna watch this work, tail, 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 little tails, but it held and that's left this, and you can see this is where this paused the other day. So I'd say 44, 45-ish. But I still wouldn't be getting along there because it violated, this is a fail, this is a fail breakout, right? 
that's a fail breakout. If it gets a little lower, I would be very careful of buying anywhere in here. Down here, yeah, here, no. So I'm out of that short. I still have one on on the Russell, but this thing could get going now. So I'll just wait for a new lot, right? It's, this isn't over, like for me. I'm going to just wait for, I just don't mess with these lugs, especially, look, look at the confluence here. Keep talking, Daily. So you had blue lug, and we're real close to the bottom of this market profile composite. So could definitely get a bounce there. If not, we break down, we'll build new lugs. I'll look for shorts and watch it go to zero by the end of the day. That was a joke. All right, guys, sorry I got to run. I forgot all about my... I'd bring my daughter to school. Yeah, it, thanks, Bruce. It, no, no, no problem. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Scott. This is uh, really great. I, I'm, uh, uh, you know, great to see that uh, some of these trades are working out really well for you. Um, I, I just want to mention um, everybody that uh, it kind of ate into Tom B's time. He starts right around now, um, but uh, uh, just uh, you'll see him uh, in the uh, uh, Traders Lab room uh, if you want to hop on over there uh, and continue the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Um, other other than that, uh, uh, yeah. That uh, we'll we'll see you next uh, next Thursday, Scott. And uh, uh, there you go. There's your move into that blue log. See, I told you you, you don't mush. You don't mush the. Market <laughs> when you make your calls. <laughs> All right, guys. I uh, hope you learned something today. Any questions? You can email me. My room. I do this every day, and you can see all this other stuff that I've been talking about. All right, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Thanks, Thanks Scott.